Okay, so this is a quick video I'm doing to kind of explain the process I'm going through to install the KDFX board on my K2600R. Um, I skipped the disassembly, really wasn't much to it, it's just kind of taking things apart. I did take some pictures of some of the things for myself to remember, um, but let me give a quick breakdown of the things I had to do to get to this point. So what we have are, um, there's actually three yellow chips that aren't worth mentioning that I didn't know about when I was going into this and I had to actually purchase them. Um, there are these ones right here. You can see that right there. Okay. And this one over here. My four-year-old son's playing. Uh, there's this one right here as you can see. Okay, and then the third one is on the dogger board. Which is right here. Okay, and they, they, there's a guy on eBay who's been selling them for about 40 bucks. Um, you know, I guess it comes with 40 bucks, you know, in, in euros. Anyway, um, this particular KDFX board does have the uh, sample option card, and it's got, you know, the memory is pretty loaded in it. It's got the full 120, it makes a RAM. Um, I do not have an internal hard drive installed right now, but I was having trouble with that, and that's something I'm hoping that these three chips may have possibly fixed. Uh, the one I had, for example, on the motherboard here, you see, specifically, see where it says V9? The chip that I had before said V6. So, I'm not sure if that means voltage or version or what, but anyway, bottom line is, it uh, definitely uh, was an upgrade. So, alright, without further ado, let's see. So, okay, so what you've got here is, uh, there's this right here, this is the engine board, okay, it's the one that actually does have the... Um, your RAM and those chips, and this is what the actual daughter board plugs into, okay? This is the daughter board, which I had to remove in order to upgrade those two chips. I don't believe it's actually necessary to do this part of it if you already have the latest chips. Unfortunately, you can't tell what chips you have unless you actually pull the daughter board off, so it's kind of a necessary process um, to do. So, um, this right here came with the kit, and this is if you have, if your daughter board this one is revision E or newer. Apparently there's a slot or something where this goes here, but you see these two empty sockets. There's they're actually the kit when I bought it came with two chips inside that sock, those two sockets. And I took those out and put them in the two sockets on this daughter board right here. The chips are named identically. So as best I can tell, it doesn't matter which chip goes into which socket. Um, it says U16 and U17, but it's really hard to even make it out officially. You can kind of see on my board, um, if I can move this in here a little bit, that right there, where it says EPROM 2, or I guess EROM 2 low and EROM 2 high. But there is, if you look real closely, what looks like a U17 and a U16. So that's that. Um, so essentially, this is where I am right now. Um, I'm going to be putting the daughter board back on. And one of the things I'm looking at in the instructions is just following carefully on page eight. They make reference to making sure that there's a, um, let's see what we got here. Anyway, I will probably skim ahead through all this later on, but bottom line is it says, if you do not remove the ribbon cable retaining clip, the KDFX board will short out. So I need to make sure exactly which, um, which cable retaining clip that is. Unfortunately, the manual is not exactly explicit with the images it provides. I think it assumes, obviously, you have a certain working knowledge of Kurzweil products, which I do not. So I'm hoping for the best here and that I don't do something to screw it up. Because it does basically say that it will short out the KDFX board if it's not done properly. So we'll see. All right, I guess I'll stop for now.